Humboldt Park, like the other parks across this bustling city, is a haven for rest and recreation. Now, it is also a showcase for inventive approaches to fighting childhood obesity by Chicago's Healthy Kids, Healthy Communities Partnership. We thought it made so much sense to package all our policy targets around one common theme because parks are part of our everyday lives. These programs are meeting with real success in lowering barriers to active living and healthy eating by connecting neighborhoods to their local parks. They're the places where families come. It's a place where people celebrate. It's a place where people play. And we want to make sure that it's a healthy place. That when you come to this place, you have good options for food. And one promising option for residents around Humboldt Park will be to grow their own food. First you want to start by grabbing all the weeds out. These pioneers from nearby Pedro Albazu Campos High School are making the first steps toward urban agriculture in the parks. City funding issues have delayed formal construction of the edible garden, but that hasn't kept teachers and students from their own groundbreaking. Right now we're working with raised mounds because we don't want to lose the growing season. In the process we'll be uh, fundraising to get everything in place. Next year we should have a, the grand design all put in place and it'll look really nice. And while this initiative aims to educate residents about organic food, it also seeks to reawaken cultural ties to a healthier diet. We're trying to make this uh, a multi-generational um, endeavor. Many of our community residents are experienced farmers that moved here from Puerto Rico or Mexico. And so there's a history and an experience that they have. And so the idea is for parents and students to be able to work together um, in producing food right here in the community. What you wanna do is reach in, break up the roots a little bit. If they can learn that having fresh, healthy food is accessible, that it actually tastes good, and that they don't need to be afraid of it, they have the means to produce it for themselves, that that will create a willingness among them to actually eat their vegetables and fruits. Growing food in my own garden has changed my whole perspective of everything that I eat because I know it's in my food. You wanna get some popcorn? And when park visitors need healthier food options on the go, they can now turn to these very tangible signs of progress. Chicago Park District snack vending machine contract is getting ready to get rolled out and we're really excited. 98 machines are getting installed in the next month. It's exclusively 100% healthier options. As a registered dietitian, I was really excited to get involved in the Healthy Kids Healthy Communities grant because of changing all of our vending machines citywide was an opportunity for people to buy food when they're hungry fuel up for games, but also to have a healthy option at the park. It saves uh, four grams. Four grams? Total oh. fat, yeah. Okay. And then how much saturated fat? Yeah, listen. One gram. The city has launched a nutrition education campaign along with the new machines. They're starting with park employees, like these attendants in Reese Park. They can be the front line to market the new vending machines. And then what you need to do with that is then educate the children, educate the parents, and educate the patrons. Another major goal of Healthy Kids Healthy Communities Chicago is to improve access to the parks by designing streets that are safer for families, pedestrians, and cyclists. Here too, real benchmarks of success are being created. The road that will run from North Avenue on the north down to Division on the south. Luann Hamilton is a senior official in the Chicago Department of Transportation. She worked closely with the partnership to test a road diet on a major four-lane artery through the park. Soon, that redesign will become permanent. Humboldt Park Boulevard is the main road through the park, and it's currently two lanes in each direction. The permanent road diet will make it a three-lane cross-section, uh, one lane in each direction with a center turn lane that will also include pedestrian islands. And we think it's going to make the park a lot more attractive for people to walk and bike 
to get there. I think it's great to have community partners. If CDOT was doing this in a vacuum, I don't think we would be anywhere near as far along. We, we wouldn't have been spurred on. So I think uh, working together plays a big role in, in success. The work of community outreach on safe access to the parks continues at an evening meeting at the Humboldt Park Boathouse. I'm sure that it's going to accomplish our goal of increasing the, the safety of our children and all of the users uh, of this great jewel that we have in our community. Roberto Maldonado, the alderman for the 26th Ward, led the allocation of funding for the road diet. We want to hear from you what you think, what are the priorities. So Maldonado and Lucy Gomez Feliciano encouraged the residents at the meeting to rank other possible park access projects by assigning play money to their favorites. Yeah. Or, yes. this is the route. To the extent that we can make the park accessible to our children, to our adults, so that they can become more active, uh, obviously that's going to only lead to healthier uh, lives and, and, and a healthy community. The landscape of that healthier community is being shaped in and around Humboldt Park and other parks across Chicago by the work of the Healthy Kids, Healthy Communities Partnership. The initiatives we're working on have one thing in common. It really focuses on making parks the heart of our community, the place that is going to help address childhood obesity. Real and lasting change is being made in these communities, and much work lies ahead. Change is slow, and we recognize that. And two and a half years in, we've made some significant progress. Whether we're changing one park whether we're changing one menu item, whether we're introducing one new garden, it's one thing at a time. And we really hope that the work that we do at Humble Park becomes a demonstration to what can happen throughout the city and becomes a model for what can happen across the nation.